everybody, my name is Nick and welcome back to The Breakdown Tech. Today I'm going to be talking about exactly what Turbo Boost is on an Intel processor. This also is similar to how your GPU boosts itself up when you're playing games and things like that, but specifically we are talking about Intel's Turbo Boost here. So let's go ahead and get on into it, but wait, I'm forgetting something. This video is brought to you by Bluehost. Go to thebreakdown.xyz slash Bluehost, get an Awesome, awesome website up and running for just $3.95 a month. We host our own website, thebreakdown.xyz, link down below over there with Bluehost, and it is absolutely incredible. We love it. Again, that's thebreakdown.xyz slash Bluehost, first link down below. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single day of the week. We post tons of awesome tech videos, and you won't regret it, so uh, yeah. Like and subscribe, but let's get on into the video. So let's say your processor has a base clock at 3.5 gigahertz. It'll run at that speed most of the time, whether you're watching a video and just generally browsing the web, you know, writing an email, or even doing nothing on your computer, just leaving it running. Whatever your computer's doing, it will run at 3.5 gigahertz until it starts to get a little stressed, until it starts to get more of a heavy workload on it. When that happens, it's gonna start needing a bit more power. An example of this would be like when you're playing a game, editing or exporting a video, doing a lot of very intense photo editing, 3D rendering, things like that, where the CPU is going to go, whoa, man, I need to do some stuff, and it's going to get more power and need more power to keep up. In order to keep up, Turbo Boost overclocks your CPU for you, boosting up its clock speed and allow it to actually boost up to over a gigahertz sometimes, depending on your processor. So, yeah, freaking incredible, allowing basically for what they call dynamic overclocking. It's not true overclocking. When you overclock your CPU, it is increasing its clock speed up and allowing it to underload, be boosted up very, very high, and actually all the time be boosted up very, very high at higher gigahertz. Turbo Boost allows you to do that whenever it needs it. It doesn't do it all the time, and that's great. The reason that's great is because it only happens when you need it. For example, when you're gaming, when you're editing, when you're doing photos or 3D rendering, it just happens without you even thinking about it and you don't have to go in and play with voltage and do all that stuff like you do when you're actually overclocking. The CPU just does it. It just works and makes it happen for you without you even really knowing it except your computer's fans are going to get louder and you might actually see the lag stop in Adobe Premiere. Now back in the day there was no reason for Turbo Boost. The processor could run at 4.5 gigahertz all the time because heat wasn't as big of an issue. They weren't running as hot. They weren't getting as much voltage to them in order to achieve that. But as they've gotten more more and more complex, and as they've gotten more and more cores, I mean, there's 18 core i9s out there, CPUs have started eating a lot more power, and what Turbo Boost allows it to do is whenever it doesn't need it, it can stay at a low gigahertz, right? It can stay down there, kind of just sleep, you know, just be all happy at its base clock that's lower and can service power and does all that stuff. However, when it needs to get up and get to work, it can do that without you even thinking about it by turbo boosting itself up. This was great whenever laptops started becoming a big thing. Because before, the first laptops had horrible battery lives, partly because of the processor always sucking all of the juice it would ever need at the same clock speed. But whenever Intel said, well, we can boost this up and lower it back down when it doesn't need it, make it go higher when it does, and conserve battery life, suddenly laptop batteries were able to increase their battery life as well. In addition to battery performance and saving your electric bill, it also helps with thermals. So that's why whenever it does turbo boost, when you're editing a program or playing a game, for example, your computer does run hotter, but it cools back down whenever the clock speed goes back down. If it ran at that high clock speed all the time, guess what? It would be hot all the time. It might end up damaging the hardware longer. So it's increasing your hardware's longevity while still allowing you to get the performance you need. So yeah, that's the quick and easy of Intel turbo boost. It happens without you thinking about it and it's absolutely awesome. I personally wouldn't buy a processor without turbo boost and guess what? it's pretty hard to find one. However, there is a thing called Intel hyperthreading, which uh, CPUs don't always have. You can check out our video on that up there at the eye. Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to check out Bluehost. Go to thebreakdown.xyz slash Bluehost. First link down below. Get an awesome website, your blog, up and running, your business's website, whatever it is, you can do it through Bluehost. Thebreakdown.xyz slash Bluehost. First link down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching and I am out, guys. Peace.